guys, we are here for another amazing episode of The Jobber's Tears, as everyone has known. And if you don't, my name is Janelle from HR. I'm here with Sir Wilkins and... What up, what up? Mr. Black over here who's on his phone and Yo. not paying attention. You know what time it is. It's game time. Yes, mother. All right. Shout out to Sir Wilkins for buying, bringing me this amazing model of Cuban rum. I have to showcase it for this episode because it is amazing. All right, so we're going to start with our opening segment, um, which is behind the world's position, where we talk about things outside of the So we just, we're not going to talk about how, how I'm feeling today? No. I could have had a bad day today. Did you have a bad day? I kind of did, man. Okay, let's take two seconds for another episode of Sir Wilkins Rants. Go. You know, I woke up this morning, went to the gym, then I get home. Put my clothes on, get ready. So you went to the gym naked? No. So you, so you're taking it too literal? <laughs> a little bit. He oh. gets two minutes. He got a minute and thirty left. At no point that you mentioned that you took a shower, you brushed your teeth, you know, you took a dump and none of that. You're nasty. First of all, so. you, as his brother already knows, he does all of the above. So you don't need the extra stuff. I don't know. I have been with him since I was 23. So I don't know, like, you probably have some nasty habits now. I don't know. I mean, you both probably have nasty habits, so continue. Anyways, then it snowed. I was like, what's going on? It was all that wet, nasty snow, and I had to walk through it. So that's why your day was bad? Well, I mean, it got better, but I'm just saying. It's just, it's <laughs> It started off that. I want to talk about my feelings before, before I get into You know what? Fine. We can start. We can start. It's supposed to be magical, not Yo, quick dramatic. question. Did you see the um, This Is Us for the past two weeks? No, because I have I stopped like episode three. I'm going to binge so you can't talk Boy. about Can't talk about this episode. Tear jerker. <laughs> Ain't no tear jerker. <laughs> it pulled it down, son. The tears pulled down, son. Crying. <laughs> Crying. So, Boy. when I get a chance, I'm going to binge watch but, it. But you, you know what's funny? My girlfriend doesn't like the show. Because it's bad emotional. It puts you in a position I, like, like, you don't want to be. I'm, I'm starting to question her? Yeah. Like, like, like yo, like, like I looked at her, she's like, I really can't get into this. And I'm actually asking you a question. How many siblings does she have? She has one. You see? Not the same effect, baby girl. No, I have one I, sibling. It's not the same. Like for us, that story is mad relatable. Like it's relatable to everybody. It's really everybody. But I think I think she because people hyped it up so much before, like in her office. So so uh, so she never got into it on her own. That's what my coworker is. My coworker is like, I don't want to get into it because everybody because we all was talking about. Yeah, because and then I think I think I really you told me about it, but I was before, yeah. like. It, before it got super hyped, mm -hmm. and I started watching it, but then when we watched it together, we watched like mad episodes together, and she still couldn't get it, get into it. Nah, there's nothing wrong with her. Well, but I, I, I was questioning our relationship for, for like a little bit when it came to that. Like, yo, do you have a soul? Mm! Because this is us. So this is us. It's about the soul, touching the soul. Wow. So then I was like, alright, but then we watched um, Law and Order SVU. Ooh. The classic episodes? I don't get how that shit is still on TV. Because it's, 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 it's fire. It's, it's, like, it's, how many times is somebody really going to get raped and we're just going to talk about What? This? What? That's not what it's That's not what That's some people get raped. Get Yo, it, like, people get raped every day, B. I don't know. Yeah, people do get raped every day. People get raped every day. Yeah, so you got to talk about it. Exactly. Can we just talk about something else? Like... Does it always have to be you Olivia see? Benson? She ain't a fan because, like, how that's other episodes no, like how that. I stopped when Homeboy, like, left. Like, they that left was left mad left. long ago. So that was mad long ago. And that was not. Uh, get over yourself. <laughs> and then I tried the Spanish dude that was on there because I liked him because he was funny. But then I, I just was like. Which Spanish dude? What Spanish dude? Think, well, he's a white. Well, he's the white dude on the, t on the show, but he's actually Spanish. Oh, he's oh he's the Italian guy. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. He is funny. He, he is funny. He's funny. So I watched that and then I stopped. Nah, nah. But you understand the, the at this point later on in the season you're really getting into the, the mental psyche of Benson mm. because now she because now the like, job is getting to her now. The whole fucking show has been about her psyche. So nah, it's getting deeper and you, you gotta take your time. Well, we're gonna wrap this up, but I will recommend you guys watching American Horror Story: The no. Assassination nah. of Versace. Nah, nah. No. Comes on. Oh, I heard that was good. It's about Ricky Martin's in it, like Matt Beaver in it is gonna be good. So a little new show alert. I ain't gonna lie, if I if I would like ever be like Spanish white, I think I'd be Ricky Martin. Like I wanna look like Ricky Martin. Full ass Spanish. Yeah, like no, if I wanna like You wanna like, be a licensed Spanish? No, if I if I ever wanted to be like 
Uh, like, I don't know. Spanish like that? Like, like European what? Spanish? But he's Spanish. He's Puerto Rican. Nigga looks like he's European. Well, I, that's because he's like Spanish. Different conversation. Anyway, Different conversation. All right. So this actually is all goes in, going into... WWE finally has announced what I probably think is their headliner for this year's Hall of Fame class of 2018. It is no other than Bill Goldberg. Goldberg! 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 Go home? Oh. Goldberg? Yeah. Okay, go home. You're a hater, son. Why am I? I don't get how I'm a hater because I don't. Agree because Goldberg was our childhood. No, he he was a part. He was like you see the tip of this pencil that you barely can see. That was how you a hater, a son. Of my you're a hater, son. Was. You a hater, son. Goldberg was a part of our childhood. So let's talk about oh, Bill, Bill so Goldberg. Annoy what I just said. No, I'm go, I'm getting into the conversation that you I just talked hear. about, and I'm gonna talk to you about what why. So this is. Hater should be quiet. He so should. He's technically girl. shouldn't headline this. No, he shouldn't. He shouldn't headline this. He shouldn't. But he should headline this. Technically speaking, Goldberg Square wasn't that fucking long. At all. But what he did was popping. Was popping. He's like Macklemore. No. He, he like he came in. Even Mac. You know what? He's like Limp Biscuit. No, 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 no. Let's erase that. Let's erase that. Okay. Let's, let's erase those two white guys. Oh, okay. Let's okay. erase those two white guys. Okay. Let's throw another white guy. He's like Vanilla Ice. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. The one hit a quitter. Let me finish. Nah, he no, had. Oh, hold up. Hold up. Hold Vanilla up. Ice, he had Gold Ninja. That was fire. That was fire. Gold Ninja was fire. But let's, let's rewind this. So Vanilla Ice came into the game. On a whole different platform, all different like white dude rapping. He actually had bars. But Little Ice had bars. Yeah. Fire very pop, bars. very pop, very, very poppy, but rap. Yeah, yeah it was, it was. Hit the, blew up in a pop shot, it's kinda like MC Hammer. But I'm gonna use Vanilla Ice for this example. <laughs> white guy, white guy. <laughs> Blows up. Same thing as Bill Goldberg. Goldberg. Goldberg comes in, never basically basically never wrestled in his life. He didn't. No, he was a football player. Yeah, she was a football player, comes in and goes on that mean winning streak. He did. And it was so much hype around it, just like Vanilla Ice. Vanilla Ice was up in the charts, so much hype around him. He was a, he, he had the look, he had everything. Goldberg did. Goldberg had the look and everything about it. He made that streak so fucking cool. Like every week you knew what was gonna happen, but at the same time you're like, yo, I really wanna watch this. Okay. So then you go into the situation like, he comes and, and then he's like, people kept wanting to him, him to come back. And then people kept talking about what if, what if, remember a lot of times during that era, what if Goldberg fights Stone Cold? Mm. That's like, that's like the biggest thing. Like what if- I think it was Ballhead versus Ballhead. I don't even think it was the whole like, any type of technical- Once again, you think it's too small. I'm not. You think it's too small. Saying. It was on a bigger stage, the biggest stars of both, both platforms, WCW and WWE, going up against each other. Now, it doesn't happen. Because, you know, w, Goldberg leaves, blah, blah, blah. Now he comes back. Because my trash match of this week, by the way, catch on the Instagram, Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar. Wait, which time? The first time. All right. Uh, okay. I mean, didn't cover better, but all right. Hmm? Okay, so it was trash. So you're like, what the fuck was that? Wait, but was it trash because, I mean, you have two people that don't really technically wrestle, or was it trash because... He beat Brock in under two minutes. Wait, no. The first match they had at WrestleMania, it wasn't until minutes. It was actually a poorly structured match. But wait, they did wrestle before. But I'm talking. Are you talking about Survivor Series when they met? No, the first the first time, time WrestleMania. The, yeah. When the referee was Stone Cold Steve Austin. And yeah. Oh, uh, okay. And Austin stunned them both. Of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because Brock didn't want to be there. Yeah, and on and, and on top of that, to um, intervene is Brock could actually wrestle. If Brock actually tried, that match would have been a lot better on both Yeah, but parts. the thing is, the thing is, they, 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 they didn't want to be there. The, it, was a, it, was, it was that dude that talked a big game to the girl and said how big my penis is and I'm, I'm gonna tear you up in the bedroom. And then when it came down, he lasted, he lasted 30 seconds. No. Okay. It was 30 seconds, it was a hump, and he, and he, and he ejaculated. I mean, I mean, whoa, whoa, whoa. But, 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 but. but the second time around, he made, I felt he made up for it. 
because it was a shocker because he beat him so quick. Yeah, he beat up so quick, but but the build up and everything that was going around him, he looked better physically. It was all around yeah. him. But the thing is, we will always remember that streak. That streak was wrestling history. So to I agree with you. that though. I guess, because you gotta be a Bill Goldberg fan to really believe in the streak. But like for me, the only thing I think about when I think of Goldberg is when he got tased and Kevin Ash beat him. Yeah, and, that, this, and, and, and that was because, that for me, yeah, yeah, but that, but the thing about it, that was WCW, that was a one of the falls of WCW. Booking. That was bad booking, yeah. Kevin Nash being way too fucking involved in the stories, and, and then being that, that piece of shit. That tasing that, shit was fucking trash. That shit was terrible. But at the same time, you, Goldberg is part of wrestling history. At this point, WWE Hall of Fame. I mean, Oscar kind of like. No, 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 no. Oscar copied off of Goldberg. Yeah, yeah. Just, that's the thing. That's I mean, the, so wait, 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 wait. You have to understand, Oscar's streak wasn't as impressive as Goldberg until, until towards the end. Because who was she really fighting? Developmental who characters. Who was, who was whoa, whoa, time out, time out, time Wait, out, time what? No, time out. Let me the finish. No, no, no. Let me finish. Let me finish. No, the Let reason why. No, 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 no. Don't cut me off. Let me finish. Oscar fought a lot of developmental talent. Towards the end, she fought real talent. Goldberg, on the other hand, his streak, the numbers was very embellished at some point. And a lot of times he fought were actually legit talents that was actually the top of the car. Okay, no, what? no, that is not what, what happened. What do you mean? That what are you talking happen? about? Half of Goldberg motherfuckers that he was fighting with jobbers. <laughs> was low key, niggas, I, nigga, I'm, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Nigga, I, it was motherfuckers coming in there, like I need to collect this fucking check and go to fuck home. So That's what's going to the Oscar? She fought a bunch of development and talent, probably going to have that two moves up there. But no, no, but I'm just saying, they were the same shit. They were the same Boy, shit. Boy, son. They were the same Boy, shit at the time. Son. I feel that Goldberg's streak was more freaking impressive. No, the reason why Goldberg's streak was more impressive because it was a guy. It. it was a guy and it was on the main roster. Let's oh, keep it a no. Let's keep it a fucking oh, bar. No, Let's son. keep it a fucking oh, bar. Oh, no, son. Do not make me look like a sexist on here. Hell no. I mean, That's, hell the no. That's the truth. That's the truth. But, but, but. And I he won say, the main roster championship. Let me finish. Let me finish. But I would agree in this or this way. The way that Asuka won a lot of her matches were pretty damn impressive. Goldberg was a lot of copy and paste. During Asuka Street, there was a lot of times that she had legit competition. You felt that, yo, she actually might lose this. So who are you going for? So you, but you just made the argument for Asuka. I just feel that Goldberg the Street was more impressive because it held more weight. Ooh, not no, because, the, the, not wait, let me finish. Not because like he's a man, nothing like that, but Yo, it was pretty impressive for somebody that who had no real wrestling background. It was pretty impressive for him. Oscar, Oscar Street was corny regardless because she was on NXT. It wasn't made, it wasn't live TV. That's the thing. You have to understand Goldberg Street is wrestling history. So you agree with me? I told you that. You, 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 you went on the left tangent. That's why you're sitting back because you know I'm fucking right about the shit. It's wrestling history on that shit. WWE, Goldberg is wrestling, because right now, the WWE Hall of Fame is basically wrestling Hall of Fame. Of course. At this point, because yeah. there's no other main level competition. Okay, so let me ask you this. If Goldberg should be the headline act, who should be then? Who should be the headline act? <gasps> Wait, should we swap seats? Because that's, isn't that my job? No. Come on, man, you slacking, baby girl, man. <laughs> come on, B, come on, B. Come on, so let, let me do my job. Doesn't so, matter if I say you if, say it. Sir Wilkins, if you had four people to pick for your Hall of Fame class of 2018, who would it be? It, sh it should be The Undertaker. And who else? That's it. At this point, right? No, no, I'm being, let's keep, let's keep it a buck. Every major legend that, that needs to be in the Hall of Fame is basically in the Hall of Fame, for the most part. There's very few people that that's not in the hall that's, that's not in the hall of fame right now. But they, there's very some of them are because they don't want to be. Yeah. So at that point, you go, okay, okay you don't want to be in it. Then the, then who's left? The Orbs that should be in the hall of fame. I don't give a. Does, it, does even WWE even have like a, a waiting period? No. Uh, no. Well, <coughs> they did it a year after Paul Barrow died. There was that period. Yeah, but, where they, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I get that. They make up the but, rules. But when it comes to Undertaker, nigga, there's all the rules out the door. Of course. All right, so Taker should be in the Hall of Fame. Class. This year. Okay, who do you think? Headlining? Yeah. 
I want to say headlining, but I think that like they should also expand it to the ECW wrestlers. Tom Dreamer belongs in there. RVD belongs in there. Even though I'm not a big fan of Sabu, he belongs in there. I'm not a big fan of Sabu. Because he's just a spot monkey. We're not going to get an argument. He's a real spot monkey. He doesn't impress me. And Goldberg's shit is impressive? Okay. All right. Cool. All right. You call Sabu a spot monkey? <laughs> yep. Like, I just picked up. Maybe because I was listening to your bullshit? Huh? <laughs> when you just call Sabu a spot monkey? No. Let me ask you a question. Answer this. Give me one match that he had that was impressive that didn't involve weapons. Sabu and Taz. But the thing is, that was ECW. That was let me, ECW. Let me, let me answer that for you guys at home. Sabu and Taz. That was a pretty okay. It's like it's like okay. saying, okay. give me one match where LeBron was LeBron okay. was playing that, that he that, that he didn't use a basketball. What? ECW has weapons. That's ECW Extreme Championship Wrestling. The lack of knowledge is so obvious when it comes to you. Well, you know what? That's when Dean, Ray Mysterio, when had all those great wrestlers, it was great wrestling, and the other half was just a whole bunch of hardcore matches. Once again, what is it called? Extreme Championship Wrestling. Right. So, so you can't take it away from the guys who use hardcore, who use hardcore, uh, hardcore stuff. It's part of who they are. It's part of the character. So I was a fucking animal. Spot monkey. I don't agree, but we're gonna move on. All right, so once again, um, WWE's Hall of Fame Class of 18 will be on the WWE Network and live in um, New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, it will be the Friday before WrestleMania, so guys, stay tuned to more people coming in. I definitely heard rumors of you know people like Bam Bam Bigelow, who was really big in ECW too. Um, you have Ivory, you have um, Deli Boys. ECW again. Um, so you have a few people that are rumored to be in the class. So I would just say stay tuned to more episodes of our podcast as we'll be updating, you know, once we hear these alerts. So the next thing with people going out, we have people coming in. So we have three new signees to the WWE Developmental Center, Performance Center. So we have Trevor Mann, aka Ricochet, aka Prince Puma. So no, that was watch, real name. Lucha Underground. And have been, he's been heavy on the independent scene. He has been officially signed to WWE. Also, as someone might have hinted, the first episode, War Machine, um, an amazing tag team from New Japan, has been signed. Um, Hanson and Raymond Rowe. And then we have the wonderful Candice LeRae, who is actually in the Mae Young Classic, um, who's been signed. So, what do you guys? So, outside of Mr. Black, who who do you think has the most potential? And what do you think about the new signings? I think all of them have potential. Okay, why? Um, you could put Ricochet in 205 Live, kill it. He could be in any space and kill it. War Machine, kill it. Candace, kill it. But it's all about how WWE will use them. I just feel like how that it's all about how they really use them, the storyline, the side dirt. They all have potential to really make an impact in WWE and in NXT. So these are great signings, especially War Machine. We need more tag team in WWE other than the Usos, other than um, Shelter Benjamin, and the, uh, the others I'm forgetting right now. New Day? New Day. Can't forget them. I forget, I forget them, Black Excellence. But nevertheless, I just feel like how that is a great signings Great, great pickup for the um for the WWE. Awesome. Great pickup. Great, Sir Hawkins. What do you think? Who has the most potential out of the three? The most potential out of the three? Yes. And um. Before we get started, you called Sabu a spot. Yeah, Why well, are you still on it, though? But, 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 but hold up! But hold up! But hold up! But. You ain't talking about this man Ricochet being a spot monkey. Watch your mouth. He's not a spot monkey. Yeah. He's not a spot wrestle. monkey. That man could wrestle. But he could wrestle. I didn't say he couldn't wrestle, no. but he is that a spot could monkey. Go in the ring. He is a spot that monkey. That man could go in the ring. He, he could. I, I didn't say he couldn't. I didn't say he couldn't. I didn't say he couldn't. Actually, you know what? What I need both of you to do is I need you guys to tell those that are watching what spot monkey means. Do you want to go there, Mr. Black? No, 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 use the no, word no, first. No, 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 no. You're the one who want to challenge me. You go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what is a spot monkey? Definition of that from this is the Sir Wilkins definition. So, spot monkey basically means you're going for the high spots in the match. 
You're not really wrestling telling a story with the match. You're going for the high, the high spots, which is like backflips off the top rope, which is like, which is like jumping from the inside of the, inside of the ring to outside of the ring into the people. It's really like high flying moves, mm. but not telling a story what you're doing. Okay, so to piggyback off of, do you have any definition of spot monkey before I read what I? No, I agree with him. Okay, sadly, so those that may not know spot monkey is a wrestler who is well known for focusing very heavily on cramming as many high spots in a single match without regard to in-ring psychology ricochet more commonly found working ricochet or extreme style. ricochet so ricochet that being said i mean regardless no one's doubting his talent. Ricochet, and I could personally say that from seeing Ricochet versus Amazing Red at House of Glory a few months ago. I could say he's definitely someone I'm very excited to see coming to the like, How many spots team. were there, though? How I mean, both of them, <laughs> but really, both of them are spot monkeys. But let me ask you a question, though. Did the spots make sense? Some did, some didn't. Exactly! Because it's, especially because of House of Glory, especially because of certain... The like, seating. No, not even no, the seating. No, it's seating. the style, though. It's, it's not even so much the style. It's like... It's a story, so it's hard for them if this is they're gonna be their one off for you to really tell a real long story. Okay. So it's hard. So that's why you're more focused on the technical aspect and I E Y. It was a spot monkey fest, but it's fine. It's something. It's not a negative. I don't. I think some people see spot monkey as a negative term. I don't. I just think that there, there's more to wrestling than that. But back to my question, so we can move on. Who do you think has the most potential out of the three? Out of the three, I would say War Machine. Okay, why? Because the tag team is 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 missing is the, have missing that void of that rough and tumble type of team. WWE needs more tag teams out le legit tag team, not things thrown people thrown together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I e Jason Jordan and um, Seth Rollins, and also the bar. The you know the bar is actually that really works. good. That works. But they got lucky with that. They got right. real they lucky. Took a risk. And Actually, it was Mick Foley who put them together, supposedly. Yeah. I don't know if that was storyline or that was like legit, but I supposedly they he who came up with the idea of putting them together. Anyways, they need legit tag teams. Like, they need to get back to that time where you have, and I, and I'm so, sorry to bring up the the Attitude Era where you have. Oh my gosh. What's wrong with that? We got 25 years of raw celebrating coming up. So. I'm just saying, the attitude there is a little bit overrated. And that's fine. You know what? It's fine. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. But if there wasn't an attitude error, there wouldn't be what we have right now. So, 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 before we move on, I said War Machine, by the way. That's okay, the yeah, thing. you asked me the But question. you said the attitude error is overrated? <sighs> Explain your point, please. I like how Yo, you take my job. To be really honest with you, though, son, name matches that didn't involve the top stars that was actually good. Like a lot of the segments, reason why that we kind of didn't notice it because we were kids. And a lot of that crap that was there, it was not really that great. Like it was a bunch of titties thrown around. There's a bunch of crappy wrestling. There's a lot of good storyline and I give it that. But overall, the attitude era was kind of overrated. I feel that the more unoverlooked era is the ruthless aggression era. So we're gonna pause you on that, bro. Okay. So, we're gonna tell you why the Attitude Era was the, was the era. Because without the Attitude Era, there wouldn't be what we have today. First of all, that's one. Okay. Number two, it's like comparing Jordan to Kobe. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because a lot of stuff from the Attitude Era, Ruthless Aggression took and, and made their own little thing. Like the way J Kobe played was a lot like Jordan, but he Mick remixed it and made it Kobe. Now, why the Attitude Era? You may have better wrestling than Ruthless Aggression Era. The one thing about the Attitude Era is that it was global. It took, uh, no, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm agreeing with you. Hold up, it took wrestling to another level. Just the way that Jordan took basketball to another level. Like, come on, Attitude Era, they had fucking CDs. Like, they had, they, so they had, it was, it was a different. WWE, the music volume. So it. did Ruthless Aggression Era. Ruthless Aggression had. But it wouldn't have happened if Attitude Era. No, but, 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 but the, don't make it seem that like Attitude Era had all these great merchandise. No, but the thing so is, is that the Ruthless Aggression Era. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The Attitude Era, the one thing about the Attitude Era, they had superstars. Wait, wait. 
ruthless aggression ever who was a legit superstar i'm talking about i'm in a fucking rap video with y cliff talking about using my slogan it doesn't matter for the fucking chorus but i just want individual man no 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 then you had Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin 316 was bootlegged. Those t-shirts were bootlegged. Straight bootlegged. I mean, my man took a Bible verse and flipped it. Bible verse and flipped it. <laughs> now, we talk about, you said about only the top stars? Let's, let's go to somebody who wasn't the top star. Mankind. He was a top. Oh, hold up, hold up. No, he wasn't. He was top. No, he, he was like he was in he, several he, he, main events. He was in several main events. Several not main in events. every main event. Mankind was right under. He's like not a super superstar, but a star in the WWE. Selling. Hold on, hold on. New York Times bestseller. China had a New York Times bestseller, and it had misspelled words in the book. Motherfucker had misspelled words in her book, and she was a and she was a New York Times bestseller. Now, Stone Cold changed the game. The Rock changed the game. Triple H, because of his knowledge from that era, is what's making this era today. That was the greatest era in wrestling. And, and then we, we, can't, we can't even just talk about WWE. Let's talk about NWO. That's, a, that's the same era, right? So, so Monday, that, Night Wars. Monday Night War, Wars, that's when competition was at its peak. That's when I go out and I cut a promo. Not just some promo that's written by the fucking, the, the, this lazy eyed mother, fat motherfucker in the back with, with a snaggle fucking tooth. Who lives in his mama's basement for six years. No, 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 no. And then I come, I come out, I cut a promo. I cut a fucking promo. I still watch promos from that era because you know why? It was off the fucking hip. It's because I had to learn because that I'm going to get some match against Mr. Black. I'm going to talk about his mama. I'm going to talk about his daddy. And I'm going to do it off the top of my head. And because, you know, I'm doing it in character. That's why the Attitude Era is the greatest era in wrestling. This era is more athletic. LeBron. But it will never compare to the Attitude Era. We're done. I said my point. Cute. Real cute. Now let me break down the Rufus aggression era. We're going off subject, by the way. Oh yeah. Holy off subject. Yeah, 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 yeah. Forget that it's even a show. Forget that I'm even sitting here. Forget all that shit. So you can speak for two minutes about your ruthless aggression. So boy. This man. Boy. So let's talk about that. Yo, I'll let you rebuttal. This man so had a whole rebuttal. movie series. I you know, he had like you had bootleg, so he had bootleg off. movies off his thing, all of that. So are you gonna keep wasting time or are you gonna talk All about I'm saying this? is this, I'll keep it really, really, really brief. You know why Rufus Aggression era, no more, I'll never take away what the add to era did for wrestling. You know, everybody could always go back to the time. We ask anybody, they'll say, yo, I remember when Undertaker did this, that, third, X, Y, Z, blah, 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 blah. But you have to understand what the roof regression did for wrestling. It shows you that, yo, there could be more than, more, more than just a group of great wrestlers on the roster. Because people do forget the SmackDown 6. It was competition within that, uh, within the WWE. The SmackDown Six, you can put any them two in any big different match, so for and it kills. So they don't know the SmackDown Six. Who are they? The SmackDown Six was basically of Eddie Guerrero, Edge, Rey Mysterio, uh, who's the other guy? Uh, Kirk Angle, Chris Benoit, Chavo? No. No. Was it Dean? No. no. Dean, Dean Malenko transitioned to an agent. I mean, if you're not gonna throw John Cena in there, I don't know. No, John Cena was, was on Raw. No, he was on SmackDown. No, he was definitely on SmackDown. He was on SmackDown. Then yeah. it must, be, must, have been, must have been John. No, John Cena was too green. Oh, Alright, we got it. We got nevertheless, it. though, nevertheless, though, there was like, you felt real competition. And it elevated everyone's game on that roster. Because they realized that, oh, wrestling is not as popular as it was in the Attitude Era. You had great matches such as on regular Monday Night Raw on a consistent basis, Shawn Michaels versus Shelter Benjamin to, to, for that beat the clock challenge. Am I right? You, I remember that. What match. era is Shawn Michaels from? Boy, he wasn't like boy. He wasn't beginning that era, 
and he was barely there. <laughs> Hmm? He's from Barbershop with the era. <laughs> he, he's from the he's from the, the, the he's, he's from the, the um he's, he's actually from the dead era. The rockers. He is. Yeah, actually is from the, the most trash era. era in WWE when Kevin Nash was champion. Oh, oh don't do that to Big Sexy. Big Sexy's a, Big Sexy has a don't do that. The, an amazing wrestling mind. Yeah, but he's terrible. He's terrible. So, if you guys haven't heard as of yet, Impact, our favorite stepchild, adopted brother sister, has actually now partnered with Twitch. Um, which is an online, it's normally for gaming, um, but they're partnering out with them, they're getting a channel on Twitch which will show old programs, new programs, um, things outside of the ring, so different, like, kind of similar to like a podcast, they're going to be doing very different materials every week, and it's, it's a weekly thing, so um, I guess my question to you, Mr. Black first, um, do you have Twitch? Is it something that you would be interested in watching? I mean, minus everyone's all idea of impact shenanigans, there's actually some really, really great content, I think, that they have. So, in my opinion, but what do you think? Um, if it's not free, I'm not downloading it. Wow, okay. Because it's just like, impact could be really hit and miss with some of their programming, real hit and miss. And the fact that they lost a lot of that Heavy hitters, Ugh, I'm gonna be hesitant to even watch it. Like, I'm still, like, if I see a clip on YouTube or Instagram, something like that, I'm gonna click because I'm gonna support because there need more brands out there other than WWE so people can work. But outside of me going out way down on Twitch and stuff like that for impact, no. Nah. All right, do you game? Do you play video games or anything? By myself. I play a lot of one player game and I don't even know when to watch me play. That's kind of creepy to me. Okay. Especially online. Like, I'm more of like, you can watch me in person. I'm old school with it. But watching me online, nah, 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 nah. Alright. Alright. Sir Wilkins, since you were ahead of the curve with the Twitch movement, what are your thoughts? I think this is really good for them. And would I download it? I probably would just to see how they actually do it. Y'all better say my brother is an old man. Even though I'm the, the older one, he's, a, he's the old man. The fact that he said, oh, that's creepy. Oh, that's funny. Watch me. That's what people do nowadays. Boy. And that's the culture. Nah, I get that's the culture, B. But I'm old school. Like, yo, come to my crib and just let's play video that's, games. That's oh, so, so come to the crib. We, we hook up four we, we, we hook up four controllers and then we have four boxes on the screen. Classic arrow, B. Hello, no, we're not, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. You know, I'm playing my game at my house, and you'll be at your house in Australia, and we'll play together. But it's, I like the whole connection. Like, you just want to make new friends, man. I have so, a lot of friends. I don't think so, because you sound lonely, B. <laughs> you sound lonely. Because you sound be lonely. Ladies, what's your Instagram? You know, Come on, Kid Crayo, B. You so feel me? So, when it's so. But, but when it comes to this whole Twitch thing, it's really fucking good. It you, is, have to, you have to understand is that everybody's trying to find a way to compete to compete with YouTube. No, it's not uh, even YouTube. It's with the WWE, WWE Network. Because there's going to be a point uh, when that middleman, the reason why they stay on the network because that check is mean. That USA check that they give WWE is mean. But you got to understand, cable switching things up now, things are going to streaming. This is the future. You're right. This on is the, the future. Man, this is the future. The program, and, will I, and will I kind of invest in this? You kind of want to because you want to see like what they're doing with it. And, and, and the thing is, when somebody has real creative freedom now, mm -hmm. because they're not, they're not on a network, mm -hmm. they can take things to another level. And the thing, they probably saved a little bit of money because you know they broke. But here's the thing, the reason why that, I can't watch it, because I've been a fan of TNA ever since like... I fell over AJ Styles. The first time it was the triple threat match. Kiss him? Chris, I'm not you and Jason Jordan. It's like, y'all, your whole, your, that whole I thing you have Jason Jordan is kind of creepy. Does this always go left, but continue? Because you always say I'm trying to kiss somebody. I mean, are you? No. Are you sure? Yeah, don't. Yo, only thing I'm trying to kiss is some black girls. That's it. Wow. Other than that, though, like, all I'm saying is this, though. What? I'm supposed to say it's a white woman? You're a racist, son. Whoa. Oh, I didn't say all that. Yes, you did. You thought that. Okay. That's just because. Just that's the impact. No, that's no, 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 no. I got to say, just because like, you hate white women, I mean, black women, doesn't mean that. My girlfriend's black. Actually, she's not. Just so everyone knows, we love and support 
everyone. My girlfriend's black. No, she's not. <laughs> yes, she is. Yo, don't listen to him. She's not black. She's mad white. Don't listen to him. <laughs> no. On Thanksgiving, you know, you, you ain't said Thanksgiving to my mom. He said, yo, if it ain't white, it ain't right. My mom almost died with a heart attack, man, because you said that foolishly. Like so obviously you're joking because you're not just let the world. <laughs> <laughs> Probably said that, but how long ago was that? Why would you go? Why would you take a side? You met my girlfriend. No, She's I'm black. Not saying your girlfriend currently is black. It's not that you haven't dated outside of your race before. <laughs> I've dated all types of women. Exactly. And I never you're said the word. You're the United Nations. It's okay. I've dated some of your friends who are black. <laughs> what are you talking about? Nigga, you messy, nigga. You oh, messy, nigga. Messy. You messy, nigga. <laughs> but anyway, th this is this is really good for wrestling culture, and this is like the future. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just talking about the future, but I will. Personally, I know you're not gonna mess with it because they are hit and miss, but I'll check this out. Yeah. I mean, it's good that you're gonna check it out for a new viewer who never watched Impact, but I just feel like I gotta see what they do first. That's why I'm ending I'm end after this. Let's see what they do first because Impact, TNA, however it was before, disappoint me on so many different levels. You see, sound like, like a jilted lover. Secret love. <laughs> I hate you, but. All right, next. <laughs> Topic of the week. Um, I don't. So I have like this really big, big thing that I can never tell the difference between the Usos. Like I, I just every week I can't tell the fucking difference. But I do know that this person that got arrested is not Naomi's husband. So I know that. Oh shoot! <laughs> I, I thought it was. I thought, I thought it was. <laughs> I, I, I have confirmed. It is not Naomi's husband. I was like, Naomi husband did Cause that I was like, yo, damn, like. I thought, I thought Naomi had a, like, a, like that short leash on him. So I guess she does, cause, cause well, I really thought this was like Naomi. When this came out, so if you guys haven't already heard of Jay Uso, not Jimmy, oh, man. <laughs> got arrested for driving under the influence. And if you haven't seen the picture, Google it, Instagram. He looks smacked. Like I know how smack looks, and that, sir, you had you were smacked, and you had no right to be in that car. But um, I'll start off with several things. Do you think this arrest um will hurt the Usos' kind of momentum? It so this definitely will hurt the Usos. Yeah, and the reason why I say that is because. WWE is a publicly traded company. So any, before, any bad PR is good PR. That was like Vince Loki, like slogan, slogan. But now not, it's, not, it's not that anymore because I have investors. These investors put money in my pocket mm. and these investors keep me a billionaire. Mm. So this is a whole different ball game. This really bothers me because I've been thinking too deep sometimes. That's why this is us getting to me. Yeah. Because I'm looking at this situation as, who was with him in the car? And why, why are you by yourself leaving, leaving a WWE live event? Like, that says something. You're, you're by yourself, driving by yourself, intoxicated, leaving a WWE live event. Most of these guys travel with somebody. Yes or no? Most, most, okay, most. Not, I'm not gonna say all because I don't, I don't, I don't know who everybody is. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, what was his brother? With his wife. With his wife. <laughs> they travel together. But so, it's just like this, it's just like this way, like, regardless of what it is though, like when I got super wasted at your party, you still make sure that I got home okay. Yeah, yeah, like but the that. thing is, the thing is. Actually, Janelle made sure you got home okay. Don't give me okay this But the thing is. I that queen, thank you. So, but no, but the thing is, you, you gotta look at a situation and, on a, with a microscope right now. Cause you're know, like, why is he by himself? First of all, why is he by himself? And I get, I get it, maybe he went out with, with them and then they separated ways, but. You kind of, you kind of look at the situation like, yo, is he some type depressed or something? Wow. I don't know. No, no, no because this shit is a Monday. I mean, it's, it's a Monday, bro. I'm not depressed. Wow. I could turn up on a Monday. Yeah, but 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 you, Janelle from I'm HR, you're not smacked. You're not driving a car. Correct. Because I get that. like, and then I, I, and I'm thinking about his. He's being irresponsible, and he's hurting his brother in his process because. So what I thought about, I don't mean to get you so what I thought about was, I was like, is this payback because Naomi's husband did this shit a few years ago? 
He got his good old mugshot from driving under the influence. So this is a family thing. I forgot about that part. Is it might be, uh, but, but the thing is, the thing is though, I'm my brother's keeper. See, so I'm gonna make sure that we keep we we, we keep each other in check. But also, now you look at I'm looking at it even deeper. What I was gonna go about to say is the alcoholism in the family. Uh, Where you're like, yo, I need this because I'm feeling some type of way. I don't know what's going on. Like, there's so many factors that play in this. Like, we're all just seeing like, yo, he's just he's just acting stupid. No, this could be an issue. You're driving alone under the influence. Yeah, you're right. And, and you work for a major company, like the one, the biggest wrestling brand in the world. Yeah. This definitely hurts them. Yeah. By WrestleMania, they have no title. I mean, because when the, when the company releases a statement, we are working closely with local officials. I mean, it's the same with, with Rich Long. Like at this yeah. point, it's more of a legal thing than it but, being an issue. A, a DWI, bro, that's like almost like attempted murder in some states. Oh. I don't know how it was it in Texas, oh, that's fine. but 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 that shit don't that shit don't look, look that, that shit don't look good. And these guys have finally hit. Like their stride, their stride in the, in the industry. I mean, but too. So I'm gonna go with you and ask you what your thoughts on the Usos. But I do want to keep in mind um, when certain things happen, like when people get suspended, it it's either hits the restart button sometimes, so it it may or may not affect them as bad as everyone thinks. What do you think? But yeah, um, if he gets convicted, he can lose his job. That's the thing. <laughs> But no, 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 no. But I don't know that. Like we don't know that for sure. And you don't know what other maybe have other DUIs in the past that may come up. We don't know that. But this is kind of like a bad thing for the Usos because yeah. God forbid, like if he if his brother does get fired, or looking like. Dang, you know, yeah, really but penitentiary, right? He did, but nevertheless, though, it's just like I agree with everything you're saying, though. Maybe low key, he really is depressed. Maybe just us over overthinking all of this, this, that, and third. But where was his sister in law? Where was his um, um, Tamina? Where was Tamina? Well, they're not always gonna be together. No, 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 the thing is, but it's just like how that hold on, it's just like how that. Where was everyone else to make sure that he didn't drive home? And they are just like Enzo's joked around and said, this is a Fortune 500 company. Where was the chauffeur to take him to his hotel? So, I mean, to be, to be and I'm, I'm just going to end this all because we got some stuff to talk about. But to also think about, like, when you're out with your friends and, like, even, like, in college, like, you might have a few beers or a few drinks and you tell your peoples you're good and you, I mean, you might look a little inebriated, but you may not be that bad. So he might not have left them in that whole like looking bad. He might just been like maybe had a drink with them and then dip and then kidded did something else. Like we don't know. So we'll stay tuned. You know, breaking news is always happening. That's it. Once you follow our Instagram page, we uh, sorry, we'll just love to get on the video and tell you guys what's going oh. on. Oh, thank you, black man, for putting him in a suit, nice mugshot. I really do appreciate oh, that gesture. Thank trust you. Me. You look at Thank the mugshot. You wanna shake my hand? <clears throat> touch, touch, touch. Oh, brotherly love, it's cute. But if you look at that mugshot, he's smacked, and you know it. Yeah. So we're gonna end this segment with the OMG, the oh my god moment of the <laughs> week. It is <laughs> no <laughs> other than your Superman hero, Roman Reigns. Being linked to a ten, not not five, not eight, not nine, a ten million dollar steroid ring. Oh, and G guys. Now, mind you, it, as a lot of people know, back in 2016, he was suspended for 30 days um, with the drug policy. It actually was a policy like he was taking Adderall, which is a banned substance across the board. So that's why it came up as a prohibited drug. But this steroid is a is a new topic. This ain't old. So I'm gonna give you guys each two minutes. Keep it brief. Keep it short. Do you think Roman Reigns is guilty or innocent, Mr. Black? Go. The wrestling f fan inside of me is just like. Yeah, I knew that nigga wasn't even that good. He needed juice to be that good. Nah, man. Yeah, I knew it. Then it's that third. But the human side of me is just like, 
dang son, this looks bad for business. Because if he really is linked to steroids and stuff like that, and it's, all this really is true though, son, it looks bad on his part, totally. So I'm hoping that is not true, you know, because I don't want nobody to lose their job, this, that, and third, and he is getting Breaking better. Business. But let me, oh, 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 I don't know if it's true or not, so I can't say his candidates or not. So I'm playing defense on this one. Okay. But this is a wrestling podcast. I knew that nigga wasn't that good. Wow, okay. I knew that nigga, he needed freaking juice. I knew that nigga wasn't good. What you gonna say, nigga? You can't say nothing. Huh? Huh? You on juice too, nigga? Are you? Oh. All right, so Sir Wilkins, do you think- And you better not take his side. If you take his side, you doing, that's it. You doing steroids. So Sir Wilkins, do you think Roman Reigns is WWE's Alex Rodriguez? Ooh, I like that. I like that. Is he a Rod? He probably is. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. Like we we forget these people are humans. Hundred percent. And I'm not saying steroids is the right thing to do. I'm not promoting the shit. But I am in a match three hundred days out the year. Hundred percent right. Yeah. Yo, listen. That Adderall shit that, 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 that they put out that he was on here, he wasn't on that shit. He was on steroids. Let's keep it a buck. Cody Rhodes called him out on, on a promo he, he cut about him being on steroids. This is why he's the GOAT. So, he was on it, he got caught up. That's what happens. All right. There's a lot of athletes that probably is on that list. Mark Wahlberg is on Wahlberg that list. Mark Wahlberg was on the list, yeah. Like, come on, let's, let's just keep it a buck. Like, you did it. He did it. Does this look bad for business? Yes. Of course it does. What are we gonna do? With WWE, we got billions of dollars. Get a PR team, we good. Let's, let's, let's go move on. The rug. So stay <sighs> tuned. Hopefully your man's out there, not on roids, but you know, we'll we'll keep you guys posted. So our next segment is brand of the week. So, gentlemen, I'm gonna ask each of you to give me your first rating for Raw and just touch on some points that you thought were hit or miss um, this week. So I'm actually going to start with Mr. Black. Um, would you give Raw this week? And just give me like one or two things that you did just pop in your brain. Got you all excited now. Raw was a, it wasn't a six, let me stop. Raw was a five, no, sorry. Let me get my thoughts together. Raw was a 4.5. Braun? That man is a beast. Like, yo, that whole segment, yo! I was like a little kid watching it, like, oh my God, can you imagine going to the same thing? That was mad freaking exciting. You know, the Bar versus Titus were right. It was cool, this, that, the revival, that promo after, you felt it. Um, Shasha Banks, that was a very good match. Just that a third. Even a handicap match with Roman Reigns, that was a very good match. Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor. That curve stop? Yo. Just Yo. when they, they took it away, they brought it back. They brought it back. Woo! Everybody at that bar. We got up. We were just, we just. What bar are you talking oh, about? Oh, yeah. So shout outs to Will who has an amazing bar called Love Story Bar in Brookswood, Brooklyn, by my house, by Mr. Black's house. A um, group of us had, once again, our wrestling little family. Uh, we got together and watched Raw at this amazing bar, um, which was great. Great environment, you know, they got games and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, games, they have beer pong. Shout out to Romeo, my beer pong partner. We, we are the bar, but continue. That curse stop, hands down. That was mad unexpected. That got me excited. Like, Raw, I felt like a real little kid watching it. And that's the feeling I've been getting from Raw for the past couple of weeks. It made me feel that 11 year old boy watching it in front of the TV, soaking it all in. Raw was a 4.5. The reason why it's not a perfect score, because the simple fact that with the women's match, it's the same exact thing, gets repeated over and over again. So that gets very repetitive. Um, Matt Hardy versus Heath Slater, it was, it we was, the fillers. yeah, you know, like, it, it was, it was cool though, nice little bathroom match, you know, it was cool, you know, and Matt Hardy entrance was very, it was good, but other than that though, other than the little 
little misses. Raw was overall a great product. All right, Sir Wilkins, what do you give Raw this week? I'm gonna give Raw a 3.5 this week. Okay. Dang, nigga. No. Well, <laughs> that's his opinion, damn. Hate is gonna hate. So, let's see this foolishness. The bronze segment was really good. Last week he was Batman with his grappling hook. <laughs> this week he was the Hulk. Oh, yeah. For flipping over trucks. Yeah, yeah. My thing with this is that I loved every moment of it. Even when he was tossing around Michael Cole. Come on. First Come on. Time, he should have really demolished Michael Yes. Cole. So, he should have killed him. If you were going to go there, you should have went there. Exactly. So, I love it, but then you're going to lose in about a couple weeks. But As is the loss, is he taking the pin, though? That's yeah. matters. So, okay. Now, I'm looking at it. I'm loving it. Then you kind of like... Come back into reality. I realize my ball's been been dropped, so I'm a, I'm a 30 year old man. So I understand what what what, what it is, and it, it kind of like it, it goes almost comic book style with Braun. Solid, but I loved it though. I love I yeah, did it was, love it. Was it. Real solid. The revival well, coming sidebar. back. Sidebar. That sidebar. Sorry to interrupt you. That Nia Jack match versus Asuka was very good. It didn't hurt nobody. I'm going to get to that in a second. Okay. So, the bar versus Titus Worldwide. I love the fact that, that Black Excellence won. Yeah. Mm. So that's all I care for. Mm. And then Cedric Alexander won. So, we, we love him. We love him. We love him in Black Excellence in WWE. So, Asuka versus Nia, it was a good match. Very. It was a good match. And... Was that work? That Nia's knee was hurt? It definitely was a it work. It was a work. But then because she she then she she you know I follow I follow Nia, Nia on Instagram. So I found like she posted about like Yo, my knee is really fucked up. But it probably just still work. Yeah. I got low key was scared. I because was because Alexis came out, Alexis Bush yeah, came out, it was like yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then again, so. but then again, yeah. side by her body though, you know, not to get on the woman's way, nothing like that, you know. I love me some thick ebony girls. But I'm just saying that, yo, when you do carry a lot of weight, your knee tends to hurt a little bit more. It ain't nothing about her knee. She actually, no, no, no. She be good. Clear, that's a people issue. That is not just a female. No, no, no. She's, she's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, she's, she's very athletic and she's in shape and her legs are strong. So it's, it's not her weight. She's fine. Okay. But I did, I was scared. The revival coming back, I never was a huge fan of the revival. Yeah. I know yeah. watch NXT. I did watch NXT, but I don't like how they look. They look, they look like, like my cousins from, from like, But Hawaii. is it because, Yo. as they said, they're not sports entertainers? They're, they're wrestlers. I'm about they're entertainers, B. I'm about entertainers. I want to be entertained when Girl, I turn on my TV. They match is me entertaining, boy. It's too, oh. br it's too, br it's too, it's too, it's um, too bruiser type for me. But the thing about it is it's like, I like that because. It you like that. Me. But let me finish. You like that. Okay, okay. But I like the concept because it give versatility within the WWE. No, I get that, I get that. Okay. You like that, but I don't. So that's my thing. I'm sorry. I like when to be kidding, like it feels like it like, like looks Listen, really Listen, you like girls with ugly feet, I like girls with pretty feet. That's what it watch is. Watch your mouth, watch your mouth. I so love me a thing. nice girl with nice feet though. You could that's kiss the thing, it. that's the thing, that's the thing. So, yeah. Roman Reigns, that match was okay. I really, I, I didn't care for it. The ma I felt like Raw just kept going down and down and down. Like the Matt Hardy and, and like the Sasha Banks match, before those two were just like, yeah. yeah. I mean, but you gotta realize that this is what I keep saying. Three hours is a lot of I get it, I get it. So then put the top, I, I, mean, I want quality matches. Like really quality matches if you're gonna fill it three hours. So then, the fifth map was a Seth Rollins match. So wait, before you get into that, what did you think about A, what is your opinion and thought on Jason Jordan's injury? I still don't know if it's real or not. Supposedly it's real. Yeah, I heard that um, too. But what did you think about his conversation with Kurt and making, he, he became the booker for the night. I loved it. I love Jason Jordan. Yeah, that's your boyfriend. He's not my boyfriend, but whatever. I love Jason Jordan. Oh, this guy's not doing nothing wrong for me. Huh? You heard me because you're not white? What? What? We all know that you don't like black girls. That's a whole other topic. What? Why are we going down this okay. path every time? Once again, disclaimer, we love all people. Anyways, Finn Mal versus Seth Rollins. It was a it was a solid match. It was. It was. The only thing that made that, that match pop was the curve stop coming out of oh, yeah. literally nowhere. Cause I was just like, what? What? <laughs> I'm about to get my paper, so yeah, yeah, yeah. um cousin Leah, can you get that for Finn, please? Get my papers. Stop it. Just, just get the paper. Man. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was literally it. But then, like, that was it for the most part. All right. Sorry. Right. So, I'm actually going to start with you, Sir Wilkins, as you get your life together. 
Um, what was your rating for SmackDown? Um, SmackDown was trash. Okay. SmackDown was literally one of the trashiest SmackDown. SmackDown. That was two. It was two out of five. Okay, thank you. SmackDown was literally a two out of five. It was literally like we're doing this because we have to put on a show. It was a house show. SmackDown was legit a house show last night. Well, we're saying last night because we were recording on Wednesday and SmackDown was on Tuesday. So, quick, quick. Yeah, like yeah. Listen, I give SmackDown a two. You know, originally I'm giving it even that high because. I did enjoy that Bobby Roode match and Jenna Mahal. It could just shows that, you know, Jenna Mahal could wrestle and a lot of people don't give him credit for that match. I mean, his matches in general. But other than the side of that, I don't want to dwell on this no longer. It was a two. Yes, yeah, SmackDown was just, I, once again, I think they're revved up for Raw 25. Mm -hmm. and they just was like, oh shit, this SmackDown this week. Yeah, oh, <laughs> it you was forgot? One of those, like, oh shit moments. Yeah. But I do think the fact that. Dane, like they, the fact that they made the U.S. title the whole show that was instead yeah, that of was having great. us wait another two yeah. weeks, like two weeks, house show style was dope. I think it was a very great call on there. It end. was. Um, no one saw that shit coming. Even Larry Morgan, one of our great viewers, was surprised. Like gave Dane Ryan props, and he hates Dane Ryan. Oh. So we're not gonna get into that. I think we are. We are. We no, are. we had to later but on. What was your later. rating again for SmackDown? Two. Okay. You said 2.5, right? Well, no, he said 2. 2. Okay. All right, so this week, Raw was over, which is great to hear, seeing as this, this coming week, we have Raw 25 here in New York <coughs> at Barclays and Manhattan Center. So, on to our next segment, which is back. Last week, we didn't do it this week. I want to introduce you to you guys our new segment called Rivalries. So, each one of us are going to tell you guys a dream match that either will never happen, hasn't happened yet, it's just not in the books yet. We're becoming your booker. So I'm gonna start with Sir Wilkins because he likes to give us a whole dream speech of his entire dream match. So I'm gonna start with you. What is this week's uh, rivalry match? Um, rivalry match this week is Edge versus Sting. What? Something wrong with that? It's so left field, but go ahead. Why is it left field? I don't know, there's just two different characters. Exactly. Exactly. You said Edge versus Sting? Yes. Oh, that's different. Yeah, but give me a story. Why are they fighting for? Why are they beefing? Why are they beefing? Yeah. Because they're beefing. Because Edge is a rated R superstar. Yes. Wait, but is it colorful Sting or, or black and white Sting? It's black and white Sting. Yeah, okay. like, who else would it be? First of all, colorful Sting do not speak But I, But I, I would make Sting the heel. Okay. Like, he's terrorizing Edge's life type of shit. Like, showing up at Edge's house. On some, on some DDP status? When yeah. he was talking Undertaker's wife? Yeah, actually. Like, that shit was wild. Like, 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 oh, just, oh. like coming into his house, just, just standing over his Wait, bed. His like, coming into the Edge's house type yeah. of thing, like, okay. standing over his bed. Like, like some Bray Wyatt shit? Like, like, some, like, real creepy shit. I think that might be into it. And the fact that his daughter, his daughter said that there might be somebody underneath the bed. Yeah. AC Sting like this. Yeah. And then he tried to grab him, disappears. Yeah. yeah. Fire. Fire. Fire booking. That is Yogo Flames. Wow. <laughs> All right, Mr. Black, what is your rivalry match of the week? Dang, son. I gotta keep it with the creepy realm, too. I mean, I gotta say, Papa Shama. Shango. Shango, aka the Godfather. Um, I gotta say versus Bray Wyatt. You okay. know? Mad creepiness is that a third? So mean, who's heel, who's face? You know Bray gotta be heel. You know. You know. Papa Shango's gonna be How is Papa Shango gonna be face? They're gonna look, look like a demon from I mean, <laughs> Ultimate Warrior, the old GBGs. Like, look, what? he could put like some colorful face paint. I don't know. Listen, listen. I don't know. Like, you just talked there. Like, I can't, I can't say that. You beat me this week. All right? I don't know. All right. So, I'm going to go next. Um, my match of the week is about friendship, loyalty. Uh, so, it is Triple H and Shawn Michaels versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Best friends versus best friends. So, y'all ain't going to say nothing about it? No? Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> How about the sell, right? No, you know, no. Three stages of hell. No. So they're just gonna fight a regular match. Well, that'd be a good match. Three stages of hell. You bring it back. Sting, no. Sting versus Edge on the three stages of hell. Wow. Ooh, 
That would be better for them, not for Triple H. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Situations of hell because you know how like he's been putting him through hell. Oh my put, God! Put, Edge gonna put Sting through Fire. hell. Fire! Yoga flame! Wow. Nice! Wow. I like right. that. I like that. Well, once again, each week we're going to tell you guys a rivalry match. I really like that. We'll like to see. You know, once we do post this. You guys can, on the comments, maybe give us some suggestions and we'll maybe put them on the next episode. So, this is my favorite part of the show, word association. So, I'm going to put my timer on. 30 seconds, I'm going to give the boys, I'm going to say a whole bunch of wrestling terms, pay-per-views, wrestlers. And they're going to tell me the first thing that comes to their mind. So, I'm trying to think, what did I start with last week? I started with you last week, so I'll start with, start with this this week. Okay? Um... All right, go. Rick Rude. Promo. Eric Bischoff. King. Tori Wilson. Slut. Ooh. Wow. Fable. <sighs> Hottie. <laughs> Jacqueline. Black Excellence. The Dudley Boys. Greatness. King of the Ring. Bring it back. Um, Hell in a Cell. Epic. Uh, last one. Um, John Cena. Greatness. Alright. Some good choices. Alright, Mr. Watt. First blood match. Cool. Bring it back. <laughs> um, buried Alive. Overrated. Boiler Room. Bring that back. <laughs> um, Bash at the Beach. Come on, man. That should be a pay per view. Oh, no, it was. But it is. But they should bring that back. Okay. One word. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker say sentences. Right. The whole story. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, Bam Bam Bigelow. Oh, man. Hall of Famer. Um, Luna Vachon. I wasn't a big fan of her. Wow. Um, last one. Um, British Bulldog. Oh, man. Legend. Oh. Okay. That's a very interesting. Why do you say that? I'm, I'm actually gonna let you explain that one. I actually like British Bulldog. Like I really do like it. Like in, in my head, he's a legend. You know, like he definitely he definitely plays his role in WWE. I just like him. You know, okay. to to other people, I it's, it's, you know how you have some wrestlers where like you just like them. You know, yeah. like other people might think that he might be a legend, but in my eyes, he's a legend to me. Okay, so keep that in mind whenever you do bring up Jason Jordan because it could be the same thing. No, 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 no. no. He just have a real creepy obsession with him. Like it's creepy. <laughs> All right, so we are coming now to our last segment, which is you made the list. So each week we're going to put someone on the list and hopefully by like episode like our honey, you know, we'll have like this long list of like, you know, like Jericho did once upon a time. All right, so I'm going to start with Mr. Black. Who this Larry. <laughs> you saw that mad fast. Oh, I didn't even finish my sentence. Who this week? Are you putting I already said it. The There's no point in continuing with it. Larry Morgan. This man. An <laughs> avid watcher of the Java Tears. You know what this nigga said? <laughs> you know what this nigga freaking said? Sabu is better than Dan Bryan. The disrespect. All right, I was like, whatever. Each day on. But the one thing he said, I was just like, that just really grind my gears. Sandman. It's better than Daniel Bryan. That pissed me off. This man literally has two moves. Hit you with a kendo stick, drink beer, the third wound that he doubly bubbled on his head and that's it. Sam, man, really? Disrespecting the GOAT? Daniel Bryan, the, the real GOAT? The literal GOAT? Daniel Bryan? The yes movement? I mean, I wouldn't, that's, GOAT is a very loose term. He's using that very loosely. I'm talking about he's like the actual GOAT. You know, because you, you know, this oh, is the got it. Mm. Disrespect. All right, so unfortunately, Larry, you made the list. All right, Terrell, so guess you made the list this week. I mean, he's, a list, he's on the list every week, but I'll mention it again. Um, Mr. Trump for saying that um, Haitians are from a shithole country. So I'll keep, I'm just gonna say it like that. Okay. Mr. Trump made, made the list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's probably gonna be on the list multiple times. All right, this week for me, this, so let me tell you a story. So, was it two days ago? No, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. It was Tuesday, yeah. So, Tuesday morning, I'm rushing to work. I'm a little late, because I'm never on time. None, probably gonna be late to on damn funeral. Um, so, I get off the train, on 34th Street, and I'm walking, and my friendly ass, like some guy stopped. 
asking me for directions. So y'all know I'm bad for me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I'm helpful. So I stopped and I took off my headphones. I was like, what? Like, you need that? Like, where you trying to go? And then my man proceeds to do one of these and goes what? like, you're so beautiful. And I was just like, fuck, how did I get into this situation? <laughs> Damn, that was smooth, that was but smooth. But yeah, like, no, shout out to him because that was the smooth shit because I didn't see it coming. But sir, I'm gonna put you on the list because I was already running late and you made me more late because I stopped and talked to you for two point five seconds. But very smooth and nice gesture. I appreciate it, but don't interrupt me while I'm going to work, please. All right, guys, so we are in the episode two of the Java Series Podcast. Please, once again, um, follow us on Instagram, the Java Series Podcast. Um, also, follow us on Instagram, the Java Series Podcast. Um, special shout out to our new friends at Black Wrestling Alliance. You guys have supported us in ways we cannot even thank you enough for. So, everyone watching, please, 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 especially our hashtag black excellence everyone please follow the black wrestling alliance once again um there are our dear friends across the pond um in the uk for those that do not know what that term means um <laughs> so um so once again thank you guys so much for tuning in um episode two is a wrap um once again we love our black